Welcome back everyone. As you probably guessed from the title of the video, we are talking about this little guy here today. This little optic is from the folks at Swamp Fox. They did a great job naming it. It is called the Kraken and it is a fully enclosed red or green dot optic. We have the green, but if you guys like red, you can go with that. That is a video for another day, uh, but I chose green. I prefer green given the option, but it is a fully enclosed red or green dot optic and it is probably the most affordable one on the market that is designed to be mounted on pistols from a reputable, reputable, if you will, company. Now this is the first Swamp Fox optic I will have ever reviewed, I believe, on the channel. And I do have a couple others in full review, so you guys will be seeing those going forward in the future. But what we're gonna do today, of course, is drop it and then talk about the features of it, talk about how it's performed so far, pros and cons, all of those sorts of things. But before we head out to the range and do those drop tests, I do need to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Gunspot. Many of you guys who have been watching this channel for a long time know about Gunspot. It is a great site where you can go on, whether you're a buyer or seller, and participate in the online auctions. So sellers can go on there. They have the lowest rates in the industry by far for sellers, and that's something they're very proud of, and I appreciate as well as somebody who is a seller. Uh, additionally, for buyers on there, there's you know things like this the kraken's on there you can buy optics accessories guns uh nfa items all types of different items that a lot of other sites won't allow folks to sell particularly privately to each other so uh, definitely big thanks to gunspot for sponsoring the video now let's head out to the range and do that drop test now we're going to see how the kraken handles drops it's actually been dropped uh several times in my house not intentionally uh but we are going to see how it does we have a target down range at 40 yards um so We'll kind of use that to verify zero. If I can hit a 10 inch plate at 40 yards offhand, I'm going to go with zero. Um, but yeah, let's see. All right. Obviously, we had a hit. I don't know if the microphone picks that up. Maybe it's not obvious. But we have a shootsteel.com target here. So hardened steel. And we will drop it from shoulder height. I'm six feet tall for folks wondering. That was a pretty good drop. Definitely scuffed it up. Glass appears okay, dot appears okay. That was definitely a direct hit. Without question, everything looks good. We'll do one more. We might have a unsafe amount of dirt in this gun. I don't know, it doesn't look like it's in the barrel. All right, good news on that kids is everything looks okay. Get that dirt out of that mag well. Dot looks okay, glass looks okay, excess sights looking good. Let's see. It's on. Can't be mad about that. Pretty impressive results there from that drop test, if I don't say so myself. Uh, it's still intact, so that is better than a lot of other optics that we've tested here on the channel. And before we get into all the different details of the optic itself, I do want to note that this is a Mug Club episode. So for new folks here, what we're going to do is a full free video here on this optic. We're going to talk about all the details, pros and cons, all that stuff. Then we're going to head over to Mug Club for members only. And we're going to talk about the top five pistol mounted red dots on the market, in my opinion, why I think so, all of those sorts of things. That's exclusive Mug Club member content. Additionally, we will take your questions and answer them over there. Uh, but Mug Club is a place that we can talk as creators without censorship. And uh, I definitely like it. Lots of other folks are over there as well. Alex Jones, uh, Steven Crowder, the Hodge Twins, many others, Brian Cowan, Nick DiPaolo, et cetera. And if you guys are interested in checking out the exclusive content over there, you can do so at the website here near screen there's also a code that will get you guys a free month of membership over there now let's get into the details on the optic 
We zoomed in here to get you guys a good look at the optics so you can see both the scuffs on it and the features that we're going to talk about. First off, it does come with a duff, couple different mounting plates. It does have a proprietary footprint, so that is something that not a lot of folks are going to be happy about. But again, it comes with two different plates from the factory. This one here obviously is the Glock MOS plate, and it comes with the screws as well. Uh, additionally, it does come with an RMR adapter plate. The downside of that is that in many configurations, the Glock's kind of the exception to that, it can get stupid high uh, if you mount this thing on an optic like for example i mounted it with the rmr plate on my mnp and it was high very very high up so kind of a downside there with needing the plate system but that is the way almost all with the exception of one enclosed uh pistol dot has gone with on the market so there's only one that doesn't use that system so i don't know that we can really you know kick swamp box too much for that so moving on to the actual optic itself it is made out of 7075 t6 aluminum and just kind of spinning it around there you guys should be able to get an idea of the wear marks that we do have on it we had our impacts there there and then somewhere over here on the battery cap as well during the drop testing and it's definitely took a beating for sure here on the left side of the optic we do have our up and down buttons there are two different night vision modes it works in night vision just fine um, some optics with night vision modes have a hard time with uh, light transmission under knobs this one doesn't have an issue with that uh, we did test it and it works just fine uh, it does have 10 brightness modes and in terms of battery life, that's something we should talk about because the battery life on it, you'll see all different quotes from different uh, companies that are selling it, which I find interesting online. But what Swamp Fox says directly is that it will give you around 9,100 9, hours of battery life. That said, it also has a shake awake type feature. So what they quote is a real life battery life of about two years. I think it's a pretty accurate way to say it and that of course I believe is on setting seven or eight so plenty bright for just about any type of environment that you could encounter. Battery is over here on the right side of the optic. It does take a standard industry battery so you don't really have to worry about that. That said one of the cons of the optic for sure is this protruding battery cap. Other optics, competitive options if you will, don't have that sticking out the side and it can interfere with some holsters. Now of course most holsters you could just take a Dremel to and it would solve that problem but it is something to be aware of if you're going to choose this optic. Now our elevation and windage turrets there don't require any special tools so I do like that versus again a lot of the competitive options out there. And they do have uh, 45 MOA of travel in each direction, both for windage and elevation. And of course the clicks are tactile, they're audible. It's no issues at all with that. Additionally, they are shrouded. Um, so some optics like this have those just fully exposed. Now on these types of optics, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna bump them anyway, especially with the way that they have the small slots in there to actually adjust it. But the shrouds are an extra benefit that I do like for sure. Mounting the optics pretty, symbol uh, i know we get a lot of new folks here essentially you mount the plate to the slide that you're mounting it to and then at this point you're just going to take a torx bit and tighten these two screws down on there to this plate until they match up and uh, that really is the interface it's a very strong interface for sure lots of surface area for slide racking things like that to reinforce it and make sure it doesn't shear off so in terms of that design it's very good I want to do a quick size comparison with probably the most popular of the enclosed emitter optics out there on the market and that is going to be this guy here it's the Holosun 509. Now one of the cons of all of them is that they are large. No doubt about it these are large optics it just kind of is what it is particularly when they're sitting on a slide. That said if you took an RMR and essentially extended it back over the emitter it's actually pretty close in size to all of these. Now the Swamp Fox is a touch bigger and of course there are bigger ones out there on the market than the Swamp Fox so it's sort of in between in that regard but again just kind of Kind of looking at the whole on here you'll see it is a little svelter uh, and that again has to do with the battery compartment and then how they run it all of a sudden here has a battery that slides in and out via that compartment and uh, of course swamp fox just stuck it on the side pros and cons to each for sure weights are very very similar but you guys can see just how it compares and i know again this is probably the most popular so that will give you a good idea size wise as to how they stack up between the two at this point in the video, I think we've covered most of the important features of this optic. There's a couple others that I do want to mention though before moving on. First off, it does have sacrificial lenses, which is nice because again, with fully enclosed optics, one thing that you want is of course that argon purging in there and nitrogen purging on the inside to keep everything nice, dry, sealed, all of those sorts of things. It is rated for IPX7, so you can use it out in the rain and all of those sorts of things. But for whatever reason, if either of your lenses break, there is a sacrificial lens 
both front and rear so it will still remain sealed and you still have lenses to use it so that is a pretty good feature of redundancy which is always a good thing with optics now uh second thing to mention there is that this was sent out to me for review by the folks at swamp fox and uh that they don't get to see it or anything like that before you guys do they don't have any impact on what i say uh but just full disclosure on that one and then lastly, the thing that I've kind of danced around here uh, in the video is going to be price point. So I think the MSRP on this one right now is $349. Now, if you look around online, you can find it easily around a $300 price point, and there will be a link down below if you guys are looking to pick one up. Um, so it is, like I said in the intro, one of the cheaper options for a fully enclosed optic on the market. Um, cons, we've covered most of them so far. One that I didn't talk about too much, uh, but is worth noting and it's true on a lot of enclosed optics but not all um, is that basically if you're looking through it which you would be of course is that around the edge here it's fairly thick it's thicker than most meaning that the actual lens portion of what you see here is smaller than it is on a lot of other options and uh, particularly if you're shooting with one eye closed that could be an issue the way you perceive it if you're shooting with both eyes open though in my experience anyway you don't notice it at all but I do know that there's a lot of you out there that do shoot with one eye closed. So if that is you, you may notice that effect. Again, though, it's one more reason to stop doing that <laughs> and start shooting with both eyes open. Um, but that is something to note. Now, if you look around online in terms of testing of these, honestly, they do pretty well with one exception. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, these do not do, do well in like freeze tests. So like when people put them in their freezer with some water in there, uh, for whatever reason, they don't do all that well. That said, I did not experience any of that in my testing. We've had it now for almost a year and we've used it in cold, not, not cold like a freezer with water in it, but cold and warm environments on three different guns at this point. It literally has thousands and thousands of rounds through it uh, mounted on pistols. And again, we've had no issues with it, but I did want to bring that up. Like if you're an Alaskan state trooper, you probably would care about that, right? But most people living in normal environments, probably not that big of a deal for us out there. So just know that going forward. I'm not sure if that's been addressed or not with current ones with Swamp Fox, but that was something that I did see several times when these first came out on different channels. Um, but all in all, guys, I think Swamp Fox killed it with this optic. Uh, you get a battery life that is perfectly usable for duty or concealed carry. You change your battery once a year. You'll be good to go on whatever setting you want. Uh, and the price point is insane. If you want a closed emitter optic, it's at a $300 street price, I, I don't think there's anything that competes with it. Not that I've tested, at least at this point. Um, there are other fully enclosed ones that do offer different optic options, if you will. But all in all, guys, it seems like a very well-made optic at the price point that it's coming in at, which is always relevant to the discussion. So. I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, anything like that, uh, you can post them down below in the comment section. You can also post them at my various social media sites. That is the best way to reach me these days. I definitely recommend Twitter, Telegram, and Truth. They have been the best over the last year or so in terms of lack of censorship. And uh, of course, you can also uh, follow me at all my other ones, the Zuckerberg ones, if you want to. Just know I'm very limited in what I can say there, and they've deleted my accounts multiple times. So the audience is only like, a tenth of what it once was on those places. So there is that. Um, additionally, guys, if you want to make sure that you are seeing my content, you've hit the subscribe button, you've hit the notification bell, all of those sorts of things. Uh, the best way to do so is by signing up for the email here at the website on your screen. It goes out once a month. That's it. It's not super spammy. And it has all of my videos since the previous month's email went out. So that way there's no big tech censoring your eyes from my content via an algorithm. Additionally, if this goes on sale, this goes on sale. Ammo goes on sale, guns go on sale, any of the things that most of you guys like out there go on sale, it will be, will, will be rather, if I can speak, it will be my daily deals email. That goes out every day as the name indicates and it has generally eight of the best deals that we find around the internet. If it's in that email, it's the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet on that particular day, the black helicopters are coming. Um, but we're gonna push through even with the noise anyway, but it has the best deals that I know of on that day. Additionally, it has a meme that would likely be censored on a lot of other uh, platforms as well, but I know a lot of you guys like as well. A lot of folks sign up just for the meme. So if you're into memes, check it out for sure, as well as the good deals. So with that, we're going to end the video here on YouTube and Rumble and head over to Mug Club. So piss off, YouTube.